Darrell, welcome to Throws Talk and thank you for giving up uh, your time here today. Darrell Hill, former Penn State. Penn State. And uh, also the third member of the US Olympic team. So really came to prominence last year and thanks for being here and sharing your time. No, thank you for having me, man. I watched a ton of news interviews, so I'm glad my opportunity to get behind the camera is, is, is here, so thanks. And Dee, you, you started off this year in great form. So uh, 2192 and in the first meet of the year in, mm -hmm. in UCLA. So you've got to be feeling good about winter preparations. No, it went, uh, that meet was obviously, you know, I can't, it was my first meet of the season. Well, second meet, technically, because I went to the U.S. Indoor Championships, but uh, my first meet outdoor, so, you know, if you start off with a PR, you can't be anything but, you know, happy about that, so it was a great start. But also, you're, you look in really good shape this year. You lost a little bit of weight over the mm -hmm. winter. You worked hard over the winter, obviously. Yeah. I saw, what were the changes you made? Um, just, just doing a little bit more running. Mm -hmm. uh, it was harder because I transitioned to uh, this program kind of around this time last year, so it was... I kind of hopped into the middle of the competition preparation where the loads are a little different in the weight room, like a little bit less. The running is a little bit less. Um, and so I was doing less than I was used to doing okay. and, uh, and eating more. Yeah. <laughs> so, so my weight kind of spiked last year uh, when I first made the transition. I kind of gained maybe about 15 pounds uh, between the months of April and June. Uh, going into the trial, so uh, obviously, but that wasn't the period of time. I was throwing well, so that wasn't the period of time to try to address it. But I knew that once the season was over, that was something I needed to uh, to put a little bit more um, work into. So I focused on that in the off season. I lost about 22, 22 pounds so far. So. Yeah. So you're also one of the beneficiaries here of the U.S. Olympic uh, Training Center, right. or Chula Vista Elite Athlete Training Center, as it's now called. Whatever they like to call it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it's, it's certainly done, done a good job for you. It's nice being here on campus, beautiful facilities, mm -hmm. but also uh, the food hall helped, and uh, you've uh, you kept that under control this right. year. It can be it can be your best friend or it can be your worst enemy. It was my worst enemy for a while, and uh, and then I used it to my advantage to, yeah. to help me go the other direction. So it was it worked out. But also, Darrell, being here, right? It's it, you have the best of, of all worlds. It's a great facility. You have mm -hmm. some great people to train with, but in that, in your case, that brings some hardship as well because you're training either with the world champion Joe Kovacs or right. the Olympic champion Ryan Krauser. Man. That must be tough day in, day out. How I is really, that? I really, really enjoy it, especially yeah. working with Joe because uh, a lot of people don't know, well, Joe was my uh, host on my visit when I went to Penn State. Right. Um, so he was actually somebody I kind of, when I was coming up in, a, in the sport, I kind of looked up to Joe, yeah. uh, Ryan Whiting. So uh, coming out here and get an opportunity to train alongside Joe was, uh, it was, it immediately helped me out because I was able to learn so much from him. Mm. But it's not like a strictly business relationship yeah. because we actually know each other and yeah. we're friends. Yeah. Um, and Ryan, it was a different relationship because we competed all throughout college. You know, we're the same age. Um, we battled so much, but he's just a super, like when you get to know him, he's just a good dude. Yeah. So it makes it easier training here because you're dealing with good people. Yeah. So uh, it's not necessarily as cutthroat as it may be, you know, when you look at kind of where we all are as, yeah. In the world rankings, yeah. you would think it would be a, 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 a real kind of you're looking over your shoulder yeah. environment, but you know you're dealing with people who are who are great guys, so it makes it easier. Yeah. And how's the Penn State rivalry? Because uh, uh, going back, you, Joe has the outdoor college record, and yeah. you've got the indoor record, right. right? I like to tell Joe that I was the better Penn Stater, <laughs> but technically he did throw further, even though uh, you know he threw his school record at the Olympic trials. Neither here nor there, but um, no, it's, it's awesome, man, because he was there, so he set the bar in a way, you know, the Mecca the Rock was 2109, yeah. uh, and that's why I went to Penn State in the first place, because the expectations were real high, yeah. um, and I knew that uh, I would be following, you know, greatness in a way, so I would, it, it gave me something to push for every day, yeah. and I wasn't able to get it the 2109, but for some reason he wasn't able to get the indoor one, so okay. we'll, we'll, we'll split it for now. Right. And also the other great advantage you had of joining Joe here in this program mm -hmm. was coming under the influence of Art Van right. He's yeah. a, a, a special guy. Art is a very, 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 very special guy, for sure. Um, I really enjoy working with Art. He's uh, 
his mentality, his approach to it is something that really, really works for me. Uh, just his temperament, he's somebody who really likes to get after it, and that's my approach too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we met a couple years ago, we kind of clicked instantly, yeah. um, and uh, it took a while for things to kind of transpire for us to work together, but it's really been working. And I saw you last year when you, you sort of first got here to the training center and, right. and, and were establishing that relationship with Art, and I knew then that you were the type of character that he liked working with and could right. mold. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you and Joe are both guys that like hard work, and that's good. He likes that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in a good environment to, to create around you guys. No, it works out because uh, the whole, this a group as a whole, you know, that's how we, we kind of train. Mm. And uh, obviously I had a relationship with Joe, but uh, Whitney Ashley was someone who I had known but not trained with. Mm. Uh, Tia Brooks was here at the time, uh, Brittany Henry, so, and Richard Garrett was also here. So at the time, they kind of really accepted me. And so it was, it made things a lot yeah. easier while I was learning and trying to transition yeah. and learning how to deal with art right. <laughs> yeah. and, and deal with all the learning. Uh, having those guys alongside me really helped me uh, in my learning process the last year and to build that issue. And Art's always created that kind of group environment. He's right. had it around John Brenner, mm -hmm. around John Godina. There was usually the one star, and I guess the star was Joe at this, right. at this stage, but the group was very supportive right. of, of everything that the group wanted to do, and yeah. particularly a, a supportive of that star as well. So. Right. Our, our, group is, our group is interesting, man, because we got a lot of stars now. Yeah. You know, like uh, Whitney, Whitney Ashley, she's the U.S. champion in this, uh, maybe for one or two years. You know, Olympian as well, and Tia Brooks is a star in the shot put. Uh, and you know, and Joe's like Joe's technically the current star, uh, but you know, I try to push him every day to to uh, to you know, so I can become a star. So, but it's 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 it's, 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 it's such a great friendly rivalry, yeah. you know. I, I like to tell them it's like you either going, I'm either going to break it or you're going to break it. But no matter the world record I'm speaking yeah. about, but no matter you know how. I'm gonna be a part of it. Yeah. So, well, so being around a guy yeah. that's that good, right? It either pushes you under the ice, right? Or it brings you out and you flower as well. And that's right. that's really been been big for you the last uh, year or two. You know, oh, yeah, you thrived in that environment. There's no, you know, it's. I'll give you an even better example. I threw 2191, which was the number two mark in the world. And I come back to practice literally the next two days later on a Monday, and my sweet mate is Ryan Krauser, who's number one in the world. So, uh, and you go back to practice on Monday, and you realize that, you know, even if you get a good mark, yeah. you know, it's right there in front of you. So right. the work is the work is never ending. Yeah. And what's the difference between those two characters? Because they're very they're very different emotionally in the ring. Yeah. So how are they around training as well? <sighs> Man, that's a that Ryan is very. Uh, Krauser, he's yeah. very calculated, yeah. um, and Joe is as well, but just in a separate fashion. Joe's got a lot more rip because we're dealing with art. Yeah. You know, when we when, when it's time to go with art, it's time to go. You know, so we're really firing. Right. But if you ever hang around Ryan, you know that he's very even kill. He's very uh, quiet and really meticulous about his work. And the same thing with Joe, but just the temperament in the training sometimes can be different. You know, when Joe's ready, when Joe's throwing far and he's firing, yeah. you know, the energy in the environment is is big. Right. Um, and so I can feed off that. And when I'm working with Ryan sometimes, it's a very calm environment, which also helps. Yeah. And you could look at him and he's putting on a clinic yeah. in the ring yeah. and the ball's going far, but that's something that I learned from him as well is I can look at him and I just say, I see exactly what it is you're working on. It's very obvious. Yeah. yeah. But I know also from them that they very much are looking over their shoulder at you. They see you as the danger man. That's a nice place to be as well. It is nice, and it's a nice place to be. I like to tell them, "Don't worry about me. Just, you know, I'll be, I'll be around." Right. But there's no element of surprise there. So. And what does Darrell bring to the event? What's your, what do you think are your key assets in, in terms of shot put? And, um, you know? I bring, I like to bring energy. You know, like that's that's really that's who I am, and I notice. Every time I've thrown far, it's because I was going to, yeah. you know, I was going full speed and I was bringing a lot of energy yeah. and excitement. And I just want to have fun with it. I love, uh, I love the fact that me and Ryan graduated high school the same year and college the same year. We competed all throughout school. I love those nice, friendly rivalries. That's what I want to bring. I want to bring uh, nice, friendly rivalries back to the sport, but I want to bring excitement and energy and, yeah. you know, really far throws yeah. at the same time. Okay. And, and it's tough in the U.S. You know, you've got so many good yeah. shot putters throwing big distances fly you'll get him and uh, uh, it, it's tough to, to make a name for yourself get attacked by me Ooh. Ooh. Okay. <laughs>
Here in the US, it's pretty tough being a shot putter. Right. It's the, it probably, that and the, the 100 meters is probably the two elite events that you know, you've got so many guys out there throwing 70 feet, right. 21, 30. You know, that's, uh, that's tough. You have a, uh, to make the team in itself is harder than most major championships. Yeah, it's, uh, it's super difficult. It's a, it's a love-hate thing though. You know, I really appreciate the fact that um, if you do make it, if you can make it in America, you Im you immediately grab the respect of the world because people know how tough it is just to break through. Mm. Um, and that's the one positive of it is say it's, the, it's literally the best of the best. But on the flip side, it is difficult. You know, any year you can go to the U.S. championship and throw 70 feet and you right. can get fourth or fifth place. Yeah. Um, so it's a it's a if you can make it, you know, the benefits are, are tenfold, you know, but on the flip side is that. You know, there's so many great guys. You can go and have a best day, yeah. but you know, it's it's tough. Yeah, it's and, very tough. And also, you know, as a post collegian, it's pretty tough because yeah. you know, you come out of college, you may be the best guy in the U.S. in in the NC2As, right? But that doesn't mean that some company's going to pick you up and give you a contract or yeah. you have any money coming in. So it's a place difficult. like this and support from the U.S. Olympic Committee and the, right. and the USA Track and Field means a great deal. Yeah, this this place was is built for a guy like uh, me before I made the Olympic team. Mm. Um, um, I was still ranked, you know, 11th in the world, which is which is very well. I had a PR like 20, 20, 86, 20, 90. Um, I was the fifth best guy in the country. Um, but you know, being fifth in the U.S. and 11th in the world, that's such a great thing. But you don't get the big sponsorship, yeah. and you don't get the tier one level funding, sure. you know. But you're still a great athlete. Mm -hmm. um, but it's in, a, in a space like this, they give you the opportunity to come in and kind of grow, um, and that's what has been the biggest help for me you know really coming out here and making that transition was was huge for me last year mm. and, and you did a great performance at the trials mm -hmm. getting that third spot on the olympic team right by no means a, 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 a an easy achievement uh, you gotta be happy no. with that <laughs> right how, how was it then to try and reset and refocus for the olympics because that in itself is tough you got to get up for the trials right and then within a matter of you know six weeks be ready to go again. Was I that felt tough like I was for you? Do, yeah, in a way, I felt like I was doing a really good job. You know, mm -hmm. at first, obviously, so two weeks after the trials, I got you know, into the London Diamond League, and mm -hmm. I'm waiting through uh, my second best meet ever, 21, 24 or so, mm -hmm. to get third or fourth, a uh, fourth place at the London Diamond League. And uh, I was training really well, but the Olympic Games and everything that goes along with it, that's something that you can't yeah. you can't plan for. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of those things you kind of got to experience to really mm -hmm really get mm -hmm. how difficult it is. Uh, well, you, you hadn't even experienced the world championships right, or yeah. any other major championships. So I was learning the trial, point. but the whole year for me, you know, mm -hmm. to, be, to be real, was trial by fire. You yeah. know, I left my comfortable environment mm -hmm. in Pennsylvania, you know, not really knowing how things mm -hmm. were going to go, travel across the world when I was hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, we were right in the middle of the meet mm -hmm. in, in, in April and May when I was throwing 1970, you know, struggling and didn't yeah. really know what was going on and just chugging away, chugging away, you know, getting those PRs and mm -hmm. making the Olympic team was a mm -hmm. big deal for me. So um, it was the same thing trial by fire at the Olympics. And it was just, it was a lot going on and mm -hmm. it kind of dampened my preparation, mm -hmm. uh, which obviously led to not the performance I was looking for. Right. And that, that was what actually impressed me most about Ryan's performance mm -hmm. in the same age group as you coming yeah. out of basically just out of college mm -hmm. um, to handle himself with that kind of control at the Olympic Games is makes him pretty special. Yeah. Um, most of the rest of uh, us mere mortals mm -hmm. have to have that kind of experience. <laughs> right. And that, now you've got that. Right. You're looking forward to London. You're looking forward to the trials. You feel that, you know, the trials is, it, while it's going to be tough, mm -hmm. there's a lot of guys out there, but you you uh, you know where you are now. No, I'm very, I'm very, very excited for another opportunity to, obviously, I got, you, yeah, you got, just like we just talked about, you got to go through the U.S. championships mm -hmm. and it's going to be very difficult, but but you know, if I go in and I and I and, I'm, and I do my thing and I just you know stay stay true to myself and I compete well, I think it's an opportunity I should get to go to the London the London Games. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm really looking forward to another opportunity at a major championship because uh, the one thing that upset me most about the Olympics wasn't necessarily the uh, the performance. It was just that. I left and I felt like I didn't give everything I had. I felt like I had more to give. Right. Um, and so that was, that's kind of my thing going into this year is that I don't want to leave any stones unturned and the opportunities, you know, unpursued. So really looking forward to another opportunity to just go in and, and give it everything I have. And if I go and I get, you know, eighth place, then, then that's what it is. But I just want to leave knowing that, you know, whatever it is that I had to give is what I gave. Right. And also, you know, you, you got to take some confidence in the fact that you're still a young guy, 23, 24. Yeah, 23. 23. And so you've got 
another two Olympic cycles in you. Right. So um, that, uh, and the good thing is about shot put that guys can stick around in that. You know, you've had Reese and Adam mm -hmm. Nelson have done done very well into their later 30s, and right. uh, so that's got to give you some confidence that you don't have to rush it. Right. It can take your time. Yeah, and that's and that's been the the true beauty of everything that's kind of been transpiring is I really don't feel like we're rushing everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like everything that's going on is just natural progression. You know, we just, this year we did a lot of work in the off season, working on some technique changes yeah. and I'm still not perfect. Yeah. Um, but I made a lot of growth in the past year and then, you know, we opened up at 2191. Um, so it's just like, hmm, that was a good start. But I really feel like uh, there's a, still a lot more that we can uh, accomplish, you know, training and physical and competition wise. So, you know, God willing, there's some great things to, uh, out there for me. And it's been a little different. Joe this year is uh, is living and doing a lot of his training up in uh, northern Los Angeles. Right. So uh, no longer here at the training center, mm -hmm. but he's still down here every couple of weeks with art. Is yeah. that similar similar situation um, to past years? But you're not with him every day. So. Right. It is, it's a little bit different, um, but we still get the, oh, it's the same one. Oh. You get it? Yeah. Well, he's dead, so now we can finish the interview. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> Darrell won <laughs> B0. Right. <laughs> All right. Honors even. So uh, yeah, Joe is uh, is not long uh, not around here quite as much as he used to be. Right. You know, training with him every day, um, but you still get to see him uh, every couple of weeks. He comes down. For yes. a few days. they come down every two every every two weeks or so. Yeah. Um, which is wait one second. So, uh, sorry, I'm just checking on the microphone. Oh, all right. I thought you said it. I thought it was another beat. No. Am I good? Mm -hmm. Okay. So every other week they come down, which is you know most people would think it's a, a huge change and maybe like a down thing for me, but it's actually allowed me to grow as a professional because, uh, you know, it's just me. You know, I've been training and working with Whitney Ashley and I've been training and working with some of the guys here. Um, but it's allowed me to kind of develop my own professional routine. Right. You know, last year I kind of followed Joe's lead and he, and he led me in the right direction, you know. So, but this year allowed me to get my own um, idea of what makes me do well, my own idea of how I need to train, how I need to rest, how I need to eat. You know, I was able to develop those own things about myself. So, you know, the change for Joe was obviously beneficial for him, but uh, it was also beneficial for me as well because although we are a group, we are still two different competitive athletes. So it, it works out. And how is 2017 looking for you? What are your goals? In, in 2017? Um, my goals are just to compete well, obviously to make it to the London Championships, like I said, and uh, and just to give it everything I have. I don't, I don't. my, my biggest chance for this year is that I'm not putting any ceilings on anything. Right. Um, I don't know what my ceilings are, and I like to think that there are any. So every meet that I go to, um, I want to throw really far. Um, I'm going to give it 100% energy, you know, hopefully just to keep a, keep an assault on 21 meters. Some of the most impressive things for me were like Reese Hoffman 2012, when he had, you know, so many meets over 21 meters, you know, I, I like things like that consistency at a yeah. high level. Um, so those are things that I look at and I say, those are things I want to achieve. You know, if I can consistently compete at a high level, when I need to the most, I'll be ready to get a big throw. Yeah, Reese used to talk about having what he called a professional consistency. Yeah. And that was for him to throw 70 feet. Right. He always wanted to throw 70 feet in yep. a meet. And he, he got into that that kind of level of consistency. And that's certainly not a bad place to be. Yeah, and that's and, and to, to be honest, that's what I'm going to need. You know, the yeah. guys like, if I ever want, obviously the goals for everybody are gold medals. Yeah. Um, so in order to get a gold medal in today's throwing world is you got to beat uh, guys like Ryan, you got to beat guys like Joe. And so my way of doing that is to make sure I'm consistent at a high level and uh, train and just be myself. And when the time comes at a championship, you know, give it all I have. But if I'm comfortable in my training there, I'm, I'm, I trust myself. Terrell, we look forward to seeing you at those championships and having some fun out there oh, yeah. and, and showing your personality. All right. Thank you. Good luck for the year. Thanks.